I'm working on a .NET project with MySQL Server on Mac OS, and there's a couple of different ways that I could get a Microsoft SQL Server instance running on the Mac OS operating system. I could leverage Docker by running Microsoft SQL Server in a container, and this Docker Compose YAML file shows how that could be done. But instead of doing that, I'm going to create a Microsoft SQL Server in the cloud using Amazon RDS. To begin, always check your AWS region, and to get here, search for RDS. We'll select Create Database. We'll do a standard create for our database creation method. And for engine options, we'll select Microsoft SQL Server. I'm going to choose the Express Edition for a low-cost development option. Most of these settings will leave default, but there are a few things that we need to update. First, we'll give the database instance a name. I'll call it MSSQL-RDS. The master username will be admin. And we'll use a password I've saved over here for reference. I'm going to choose the most affordable option of T3 small for development purposes. Here under connectivity is how we will connect to this instance remotely. If you've done this before or already connect to AWS remotely, then you might already have configured a virtual private cloud. If not, this will be set to default. I'm going to use my default VPC, but you may choose to create a new one. In order to connect to this instance remotely, we're going to select yes for public access. This is a key step to make sure this works. We are going to have to address the firewall in a later step, but for now, I'm going to keep all the defaults of the virtual private cloud security group. If we were developing lambdas, we might want to enable this RDS proxy, but for simplicity, I'm going to leave this disabled. Note that we are not using Microsoft SQL Server Windows authentication, and I'm going to disable performance insights for my development instance, which brings my estimated monthly cost to $34.42. Let's go ahead and create database. The creation of a database takes some time, to which you can check its status under the status column here. It will ultimately make its way to available. Use the refresh button periodically to update status. Also at the top of the screen is a pending status update with the button to remind you of your credential details. During the creation process, note that if you come into the database, many of the properties have not yet propagated. For example, the security group rules will be empty. Our database is finally available, and we can now come in here to retrieve our connectivity settings. On my local Mac, I'm using DataGrip by JetBrains to connect to the remote Microsoft SQL Server instance. Create a new database for data source, Microsoft SQL Server. I'll mirror my database name. For the host, we need to copy the endpoint from the connectivity and security. We're using the standard port of 1433, which we'll copy from the connectivity and security settings as well. Our username is admin, and we'll apply our password. When you test this connection, it will likely fail with an error connection timed out. This is because our virtual private cloud security group firewall is blocking this port. In order to fix that, scroll down to the security group roles and find the security group with inbound rules. If you're using the default, they'll both be the same. Click it so that we can edit the security group. In the security group configuration, scroll down and find the section with inbound rules, and then select edit inbound rules. We're going to add a rule. We'll select MSSQL as the type. That will give us our port number of 1433. And for source, we'll choose anywhere on IPv4. Now, when you test your connection again, it will likely fail a second time with the error the driver could not establish a secure connection to SQL Server using secure socket layer encryption. In order to fix this, we need to trust the certificate used by AWS. We need to append to our URL encrypt true and trust server certificate true. So let's add these two properties to our URL delimited by semicolons encrypt true. Trust server certificate, true. And finally, when we test our connection, it should succeed. And now we can finally use our instance remotely. In the way that we would expect, we can create a database. We're going to add a schema to that database.
create a table on that schema. and then edit table data and commit our changes.